Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to January of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you are new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so great to meet you. Thank you for checking us out here at Divine Conversations. Um, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Welcome to the Unicorn Herd. So we're going to get into the energies of January for Virgo. And what I'm going to start with is Virgo rising. Now, which means I am going to be talking about the astrology for you guys. So in terms of the astrology, if you are new here, please understand that I approach astrology from the true sidereal practice, which is different from mainstream. It includes Ophiuchus. It changes your placements. Most likely it changes your placements. And the constellations are not an equal 30 size, 30 size, uh, 30 degrees, excuse me. And so that changes quite a bit, especially in relation to mainstream or tropical astrology. So if you're more familiar with mainstream astrology, I do recommend that you check us out here and just vibe with it and see how it's going. If you have never seen your sidereal chart, um, and you're interested in looking at that, please feel free to send me an email and ask for a, a chart. Um, I can do a mini chart interpretation for you for about $30, um, well, for $30. Uh, and um, also, if you would like a personal reading with me, not just astrology, but, um, you know, just a general tarot reading for me, I am available for that as well. My email address is can be found in the description box below. So send me an email, let me know you're interested, and I'll get you all set up. If you are interested in getting some extra content from me throughout the month, check me out or check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Lots of great stuff over there, um, lots of extra content and whatnot, whatever. That link can be found in the description box below as well. So like I said, we're going to start with Gemini. I'm sorry, not Gemini. I just did Gemini's reading. We're going to start with Virgo rising in the first half of this video. And then in the second half of the video, we're going to get just a regular general card pull for the energies of the Virgo collective for the month of January. And when we get into that second half, that is non-denominational. Okay. So that doesn't have to resonate with or have to be specific to any system. It's just the Virgo collective. So that's going to be sun, moon, rising, Venus, any placement that you have, and even especially for the cross watcher. Okay. So, um, with that said, let's just get into this Virgo and, uh, I channeled a number of, um, now I'm sorry, this is for Virgo rising. I channeled a number of songs for you this month that came to mind. And I did have a title that I wrote down here, but I really feel like, and this is basically officially what your, um, the title of your reading is. Uh, at first I wanted to say that the title was, it's all about you. And that's where the first song that I channeled for you came from. It's all about me by Maya and Drew Hill. Well, Maya featuring Drew Hill. Um, but really I feel like the main theme for you this month is there's like, there's a level of coming out of the closet here for you, Virgo, whether you are actually coming out of the closet sexually congratulations to you or it's just that you're coming out of the closet about something that something that it is you truly value in your life that you've never really allowed yourself to align with i definitely feel like that is a big theme for you and so because of that the second song that i channeled for you is um i'm coming out by diana ross in relation to that, if this is sexual for you about like, you know, your sexual identity and whatnot, the other song, the last song I channeled for you was Sexual Revolution by Macy Gray. Um, so go ahead and give those songs a listen if you're unfamiliar with them or if you just like to tune back in if you like them. But that really is the, the general theme for you here. There is a serious emergence of a brand new you that's happening or being able to take shape or take place during this energy, especially with the retrograde mer uh, motion of Venus, right? Venus is retrograde through Sagittarius right now in sidereal astrology. And that's really helping us to gain an expanded point of view to help us readjust, shift, or change our personal alignment to our values, okay? 
So I have a number of things that are, are I've channeled here that I've written down, but let's go to the chart. I want to show you guys the chart and then we'll talk through all of my channelings here. Okay, so this is the chart for a Virgo rising for the month of January of 2022. Now, everybody has a central focus this month. And as you can see, Virgo down here, this is where mostly this is where your energy is concentrated right now. Okay, it's in between your third, fourth and fifth house, with your fourth house being the main focus for you this month. And that is because of the big planetary aspects that we have going on this month. Obviously, we started the month with a new moon. And then we have a full moon at the end of the month, um, which is going to be on the 17th of January. But the day before the full moon, which a full moon is a time of great power, right? That's when the power of the moon is at its fullest. And you can really draw on the greatest, the maximum potential for the moon, the lunar energies during the full moon. But the day before that full moon, we have a conjunction between the sun and Pluto. And for all of us here, that's providing our sense of self, our sense of identity, which is being affected right now by Uranus, which is up here in your eighth house for you, Virgo. Uranus is retrograde right now through Aries, and Aries is our sense of self, right? So there's this big change, there's this big revolution that has been going on since August, mid-August of 2021, when Uranus went started its retrograde motion. There has been a big theme of shifting our inner alignment, shifting our relationship to ourselves, I'm hearing specifically for you, Virgo, but just in general, reshaping, changing our alignment, getting into greater alignment with destiny, what we're really truly destined to experience or live out in this lifetime, okay? So, um... Oh, where was I going? Oh, the conjunction. So the conjunction between the sun and Pluto is really allowing us to get an infusion, strong infusion of power within our soul, right? Because the sun is conjuncting with Pluto. And then the day after that, we have the full moon, which is an even more potential, potential for maximum power, yes? All right, Virgo, so let's talk about this. The conjunction between the moon and the, and the I'm sorry, the conjunction be, between the sun and Pluto and also the full moon are all happening in your fourth house. The fourth house is your house of nurturance, uh, family, how you are nurtured by your family, how you nurture your family, your family history, maybe even your bloodline or lineage. Um, past circumstances with your family, how you grew up as a child, the, the nature of that reality, and also how you nurture yourself, okay? All right, so that's the big focus here for you, the fourth house. Now, what I was getting from the fourth house for you is changes in the way that you nurture yourself and or your family, yes. Changes in the way that you associate with your family, which is kind of where some of this I'm coming out type of energy is coming from. Um, if you are finding that you need to change or enforce new boundaries, the conjunction between the sun and Pluto, and on top of that, the full moon can infuse you with a greater power uh, or a sense of empowerment to do so, to change those boundaries, to enforce those boundaries. Finally, allowing yourself to accept what truly has value to you Um and maybe even setting the record straight in terms of this with some of the peoples that are with people that are closest to you, right? Your family, your friends, uh, and it ha and I got this feeling of like, how dare you be so bold to do this? And yet at the same time, you're loving it. It feels really good for you, Virgo. Um, now, now what I got from that in terms of like, how dare you feel so emboldened? That comes from your service-oriented energy, Virgo. I feel like a lot of you have really, and this is very similar. This is very similar to what I Gemini, I channeled for Gemini uh, today, um, right before I did your reading, which makes perfect sense because both you and Gemini are ruled by Mercury, right? So okay, <clears throat> uh, but your sense of service has come into question and i do i definitely feel like there has been a level of an element of you really putting yourself your true values your whatever on the back burner um being of extreme service to people 
in a way that is super detrimental to you. Like it feels like there have been some things about yourself or about your values system, what it is you really value, tr really truly value in life that you have been completely pushing aside in service of other people uh, and their needs and their wants and even their whims, okay? But now what is kind of bringing this revolution for you in terms of this is the fact that Uranus has been retrograde in your eighth house. This is uncovering a lot. This is really allowing you to get a deeper understanding of what it is, who it is you truly are, what it is you truly want, what it is you truly value out of life. Um, and this is also where the sexuality aspect comes into play because the eighth house is about death and transformation, yes, but it also is also about sex and that that reproductive element of sex right so for some of you this literally is a moment where you could be coming out of the closet sexually and i'm sorry if i'm spilling the beans on some for some of you here but i really i really want to say congratulations even if this is not sexual for you congratulations in terms of allowing yourself to really sorry tracking mosquitoes <laughs> to really come out about this and to be who it is you truly are yeah now, moving forward here, uh, the other thing to think about for you, especially something that would probably uh, affect you greatly this month, is the fact that your ruling planet of Mercury is going to be going retrograde. And as you can see here, the chart that you see in front of you is for today, January 5th. And right now, Mercury is still direct. And as you can see right down here, Mercury is in your fifth house in Capricorn right now. But it's going to start its retrograde moment movement back from your fifth house back into your fourth house. And the fifth house is all about your personal self-expression. And in terms of that, Virgo, you have been carrying some really heavy burdens, 10 of wands, okay? But with this retrograde motion of Mercury, you may actually be open to communicating about it. You are, you have the opportunity, all of us here this month, have the opportunity to really rewrite some programming. Okay, in terms of our the way that we communicate, what we have learned, what it is we seek out of life, how it is we communicate with individuals. Uh, also, keep in mind that Mars, which we're going to talk about in a second, is in your third house, which is also ruled by Mercury. Okay, and Mars is going through a huge transformation in terms of the masculine side, action oriented, what it is we move towards, how it is we move towards it, and all that kind of stuff. But Mercury here is going to be going retrograde back from your fifth house back into your fourth house. And in terms of this personal sense of nurturance here and all the burdens that you've been carrying in terms of this ten of wands, you have the chance to rewrite that programming. All right. I want to get a little bit more here for you. Um, also, but though, keep in mind, look, Venus is here in your fourth house as well, and she's moving retrograde there. All of the values the, the, like the value system that you have developed over your lifetime in terms of your family and all that kind of stuff, your fourth house energy has the chance to be reworked in terms of a greater sense of alignment with who it is you truly are because of Uranus up here moving retrograde through Aries, which is our sense of self, right? I want to get a little bit more on this Ten of Wands energy for a second. So let me switch back to the other scene so you guys can see a little bit more here. What messages do we have for Virgo in terms of this Ten of Wands, this heavy burden you've been carrying? The Tower. Some of you, look, this may, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is easy or it's going to be easy. For some of you, this actually is going to be truly, truly difficult or truly, truly challenging, especially when it comes to setting this, the record straight with your family or maybe just certain family members. Again, if you do find yourself coming out of the closet sexually, and that even could be, like that could really be if you are a child of um, same-sex parents coming out to them as straight. That is a real thing, you guys. <laughs> like some of you may look at me like I have six heads by saying that, but that literally is a real thing. You know, there are a lot of kids or a lot of individuals that grew up with same-sex parents kind of wondering if their parents are going to accept them when they come out as heterosexual or straight. It seems trivial, but it's a real thing. But anyway, um, topic of contention. There's a big change that's happening here. Some of you are literally saying, I am putting down these burdens. 
I am not carrying this any longer. With that, you do have the King of Swords. And this is not coming from an emotional place. It's not. It's coming from a very balanced perspective, a very objective perspective, okay? It is it is what it is. The facts are the facts, straight facts, all right? No, no emotion involved, nothing. Yeah, underneath the deck, at the bottom of the deck right now for you, Virgo, in terms of this, is the Seven of Pentacles, okay? Very Virgo energy, I'm feeling, but um, the Seven of Pentacles represents the realization or the understanding, I'm getting specifically the understanding of the burdens that you've been carrying and how that has been affecting you, okay? And recognizing and realizing that this is not what you want for your life. This is really not who you truly are. This is not getting you where you want to go. It's not providing you with any sort of benefit. It's not providing you with the harvest that you intend to gather or gain from this hard work that you've been doing. And thus, there is an end to that cycle. Underneath the Seven of Pentacles is the world, followed by the chariot, followed by judgment. This is ooh, to the King of Wands. This is really a time, Virgo, for you to step up, step up to the plate, be who it is you're true, you truly are, feel confident in yourself, not only just feeling confident in yourself, but feeling confident in, in terms of going after what it is you truly want, not letting anybody tell you you can't. And that's because the universe is calling you towards it at this time. Judgment. And this is you getting into that better alignment, that galactic alignment I'm hearing with the chariot. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful energy, Virgo. Let's go back to the chart real quick and let me just see here if there's anything, is there anything else that I want to point out for you? Let's talk about Mars for a second because Mars is going through a big shift for all of us. Okay. It doesn't matter, Eric. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So Mars is going through a pretty big shift right now. So as you can see, Mars has been transiting through your third house this month. It started in Scorpio, which again is connected to, for you specifically, Virgo, is connected to this eighth house energy and what Uranus has been doing, going retrograde through Aries, which for you specifically, Virgo, Aries is the ruler of your eighth house, right? personal identity, um, deep excavation, and all that kind of stuff. You actually may be a fairly intuitive individual with Aries ruling your eighth house. Virgo is an intuitive and a sign anyway, um, and that makes sense because Virgo is very much about helping others helping others to streamline their process, to improve their sense of health and well-being, maybe even their routine. And there does have to be a level of intuitiveness to really be able to do that effectively. So Virgo is a fairly intuitive sign anyway, but with Aries being your ruler of the eighth house and there's a big change, a lot of eighth house energy that is being utilized for you right now. I feel like your sense of self-awareness or even your sense of, I'm, I'm sorry, really your sense of intuitive nature is really heightened at this time, but it's all surrounding your own sense of self, right? So back to Mars. Mars started out the month in Scorpio. Mars has been really digging up a lot of stuff for us in terms of our masculine energy. This is one of those major steps in terms of the union between the masculine and feminine that's going to be happening by the time we reach the 3rd of March, where Mars and Venus will be conjunct and then they'll be conjuncting with uh, Pluto. Okay. Um, anyway, Mars now moves in, is now, at as of this moment, January 5th, when this reading is being recorded, Mars is now in Ophiuchus, and that's where the healing aspect in terms of your masculine energy and the reworking of that situation can happen because Ophiuchus is such a powerfully healing sign. But for you, Virgo, this is happening in your third house. So there really, I feel like there's really going to be a lot you need to communicate about, okay? You do have the High Priestess in reverse that has just come out here in terms of in terms of talking about Martian energy for you. What I'm hearing with that, Virgo, is up until this point, you have been ignoring your intuition or you've been ignoring the signs from the universe in terms of the new direction it is you need to be taking. Let's, can you give us some more about that, please, Spirit, in terms of the High Priestess in Reverse for Virgo? Oh, Virgo. Oh, Virgo. This absolutely has to do with your family. But, uh, well, okay, not just your pa family. It could. 
strong family energies here, especially since we have a for strong fourth house connection for you, but also your personal emotional fulfillment. What really truly makes you happy, what makes you feel blissful within, right? You now have the Ten of Cups and the Knight of Cups. In terms of Mars energy for you, in terms of the action-oriented energy for you, masculine energy, we really could be talking to a, a strongly masculine individual here, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. You, I am feeling for, for whomever this really resonates for, you have been heavily dominated by masculine energy, but not just dominated by masculine energy, dominated by toxic masculine energy. And I do see Virgo as a feminine, very much a feminine sign, right? Um, in terms of the nurturance that it brings to the collective. And a lot of the ways that you have been trying to nurture or show up for people has been skewed by toxic masculine energy. And that's, I mean, that's everybody, okay? Because that's just the patriarchal system we have right now in society. But for you, Virgo, this is, has affected you even more just because you're so service-oriented anyway. So you've been trying to appease people, kowtow to people, enable people, or just be of service in ways that twisted or toxic masculine energy has been dictating for you, or just not just for you specifically, for the whole collective. Like, I don't want you to feel like this is some sort of punishment on you. It's really just the, nat the, the, the nature of society at this time, and you wanting to be of service to society, okay? But here, in terms of the high priestess in reverse and the Mars energy, the masculine energy here, you have been ignoring your intuition. You have been ignoring your higher self or spirit guides that have been asking you to move forward with and pursue what your heart truly wants. A big thing for, oh, I'm sorry. And then finally at the bottom of the deck right now, Virgo, you do have the page of wands. Underneath that is the four of pentacles, the seven of swords, the three of swords, and then the nine of cups. Um, this structure, Four of Pentacles, has been deceptive. Seven of Swords has been breaking your heart or causing you pain. And it has been a little bit of a comfort zone energy, but now you have the Nine of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, and then the Ace of Wands here, and then the Sun. So this is you working on achieving greater satisfaction because of the, oh wow, the Sun, the Moon to the Star and then the queen of pentacles. I'm, I'm, I'm overdoing it kind of at the moment, but this is all kind of making sense. So if you're following along, just keep following. But the sun, the moon, and the star, this is you coming out of the darkness, coming to the awareness of what it is you truly dream of, what it is you truly want. I, thought, I forgot what I was originally going to say here, but basically you do have the page of wands. You have this uh, is the overall energy right now. There is a change in your alignment. Again, I really feel like in terms of the Martian energy that is affecting you here with Mars moving through your third house down here right now in Ophiuchus, I feel like there's a lot you're going to have to say. A lot you're going to have to re be really, truly honest about. Uh, with the people closest to you. Again, how dare you be so bold as to stand up or assert yourself, Virgo? But quite frankly, again, I love it. And you, uh, well, I feel like you love it. And I feel like you love it because it's actually, truly empowering you. It's even, no matter what you experience, no matter what you experience in terms of this tower moment, right? In terms of you setting the record straight in, uh, with the people around you, Ten of Cups in reverse, it doesn't matter because what it is you're bringing forward right now is empowering you. It does empower you because it's honoring the truth of who you are and your personal reality. Ten of Cups in reverse with the Four of Pentacles again. What do you want to say about this spirit? Ten of Cups in reverse. Four of Pentacles. Yeah, well, you've been holding on to this. Even though this didn't make you happy, even though this didn't provide you with a sense of fulfillment, emotionally, maybe even wish fulfillment, you've been holding on to it. Why have you been holding on to it, uh, Virgo? I just wanted to say Scorpio, but Scorpio is influencing this change in alignment, this deep excavation of what is what the situation truly is or what your values truly are with Venus also going retrograde right now. But why have you been holding on to this, Virgo? What do we want to say to Virgo about this? Your sense of self is what I'm just hearing. Some of you may have really gotten your 
And this is, this is normal, okay? I don't want you to think that this is anything out of the ordinary, but you really got your sense of self from this community or this family aspect. I mean, again, that's normal because the fourth house energy, which is a big focus for you this month, is where you really start to, where you potentially have the nurturance that really allows you to feel safe and healthy and happy for you to then enter into the fifth house energy of your personal self-expression. Going out there in the world and showing your stuff, right? Because fifth house is ruled by Leo, yeah? Okay, so, all right, so you did, you, 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 you accumulated your personal sense of self from this fourth house familial energy, but it was an illusion. The moon. Mm, now I'm picking up on some deep, dark secrets in your family, Virgo. What's this moon energy for Virgo? Woo! Uh-huh. Okay. All right. You've been woke for a while, Virgo, and I know many of us in this collective now, we really, like, we really can't even stand that word woke. But for lack of a better term, Virgo, you've been woke for a while, especially, especially if this is resonating on a family level. You have been so woke, but there is nothing you could have done about it. At least under the current structure, there was nothing you could do about it. Two of swords to the hanged man in reverse and you just kept on going but what you were doing virgo nine of wands is you were feeding the, the devil you were feeding people's egos and there's that sense of service energy or orientation in your energy right You were feeding the devil, you were feeding the monster, you were feeding the toxicity, you were you were you were feeding the codependency, you were feeding all of that shit, right? Not anymore. I want to get a closing message from the tarot here for you in terms of this and then we're going to close it out this part of the reading with um, the oracle of the seven energies. But anything else you want to say to Virgo for this month, Virgo rising specifically for this month of January 2022 spirit? Yeah. Yes. Last card is the Magician, Virgo. Now is your time. Now is your time to really focus on manifesting what it is you want. Get into that alignment and baby, set the record straight, okay? Look, it is what it is. It is what it is, okay? Ah, okay, good. At the bottom of the deck here, you do have the Eight of Swords, but Spirit want, is saying the Eight of Swords is in reverse. You're you're breaking yourself free. And then underneath that, damn, underneath that is the King of... Whoa! You, oh my God, Virgo, you are so in alignment. Okay, look, ultimately, we're all the way back to Seven of Pentacles and Judgment here. You do, the Knight of Pentacles is underneath that. Okay, more Virgo energy, but Seven of Pentacles is a theme for you, right? Seven of Pentacles to Judgment. You are realizing that what you have growing in your garden or what you are able, what's harvestable right now is not what you want, is not what you want. And so in this energy, you have the power, the potential, the power, the power, Virgo, conjunction between the sun and Pluto, the magician, the power to break yourself free from the mental conditioning, from the, the old programming, from the, the prison, right? The mental prison, maybe even seemingly feeling like a physical prison and to and, and and the thing about this virgo for you is that king of cups you know how it is you feel you know what it is you need to do and you know it's not easy but you're being infused with the emotional power the emotional stability to do it because it's the truth ace of swords and you know how it is you feel the queen of cups look at that the king the queen of cups and the ace of swords sandwiched in between them Talk about emotional balance and emotional maturity, right? Surrounding the truth. Next, Six of Pentacles, reciprocity. Another Virgo, strong Virgo energy. Six of Pentacles to the chariot. There is the representation of the balance between the masculine and the feminine, the king and the queen of cups for you. The king of swords, the truth, objective honesty, and the world. Closing out that cycle really super beautiful for you virgo i'm loving this if you really like even though this may be pretty daunting if you're feeling super empowered right now revel in that 
because you have every right to feel this way, okay? Let's close this part of the reading out for my Virgo Risings. Oracle of the Seven Energies. Two more shuffles here. One. And two. All right, Virgo. Closing Oracle message for you. Virgo Rising for January 2022. Virgo Rising. Okay. <clears throat> It's time for you to really start aligning with birds of a feather. Overall energy for you to close out this reading is in fact card number 23, birds of a feather, two and three boil down to a five. I'm sorry, no, that's 25. Okay, no, that's 25, but two and five boil down to a seven. Wisdom, luck, empowerment, right? But what you have here, finally, your official oracle guidance is earth magic. First of all, you are an earth sign, Virgo. So you're, connection to the earth is deep and felt truly at this time but also the real message here because this did come out reversed make sure you stay grounded this is probably going to be even though you're feeling empowered right now this is probably going to be a really emotional time and it may not even be emotional from your point of view it may be super emotional for the people whom you have this message to send to uh, so in order to deal with that, whether it's your emotions or their emotions or everything in between and or everything between, right? Make sure you stay connected to the earth. Make sure you stay grounded. The earth will help you transmute anything that is negative that you no longer need in your life. Okay. I love you guys. All right, cool. I am going to pause for a moment reset and then we're going to get into the second half of the reading for just general virgo energies yeah i'll be right back hello guys okay so getting into general energies for the virgo collective now this part of the reading is non-denominational okay so i don't even know if that's the right term for what i'm trying to say here but it seems to fit it flows so i'm just gonna go with it but this is not associated with any specific um astrological practice okay this is this part of the reading is just general pull for the uh virgo collective sun moon rising venus mercury mars whatever placement you have within virgo this could resonate for you also this could resonate for or this could be a message for a cross watcher if we have anybody that's cross watching on behalf of a virgo energy yes again if you guys would like a personal reading with me i am available for that if you want to get extra content with me uh throughout the month check me out over on patreon all of the, li the links to that can be found in the description box below if you're interested in getting any sort of services with me just send me an email p.s i will never reach out to you and say hey i feel like you need a reading eh, wrong if you want a reading you reach out to me i will be happy to serve you yes Alrighty, kids let's get into this i am going to start with the energy oracle deck here I'm going to give this five shuffles and we'll see what general collective messages we have for the Virgo collective. Yeah. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. That was run. That was one. This is two. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Any Virgo placement you have, if you're interested in it, just watch it. See if it resonates for you. This is three. For my Virgos. For my Virgos. There it is. This is four. What messages do we have for the Virgo Collective for January of 2022? Spirit, this is five. All right, Virgo. Let's see what we've got. Sense of well-being is the first phrase that comes to mind. Greater sense of well-being at this time. And this absolutely could be uh, financial, but this is definitely connected to what's going on with Venus. Venus is currently retrograde right now, and that is helping us reshape, reshift, rework our values system. First card that came out for you, Virgo, is door to value. Okay. So yes, this could be monetarily in terms of money, finances, business opportunities, your personal business, whatever. Uh, but also just your values in general. Okay. Two more cards here. The garden and the gate and the thinking man. 
And then at the bottom of the deck is the world. So this is really, really super connected to Martian energy, what's going on with Mars right now, the thinking man, uh, but also Sagittarian energy where Virgo, oh, I'm sorry, where Venus is moving retrograde through right now, Sagittarius, in terms of sidereal astrology, okay, but in mainstream astrology, Venus is retrograde or tropical, mainstream tropical, Venus is retrograde through Taurus right now, which again, Venus rules Taurus, okay, it's all about our values at this moment. But then the, specifically, you do have the world here. So for those of you that resonate with, this is the overall energy right now. For those of you that resonate with sidereal astrology, this translates into the Sagittarian aspect of Venus's retrograde because Venus is in Sagittarius right now in terms of sidereal astrology. And this could cause you to travel, whether this be travel, literally traveling to different countries, different states, traveling outside of your comfort zone. This is an opposition this is a stark opposition to like your third house energy, which would represent your immediate surroundings, your hometown, where it is you live currently. And then versus the ninth house energy, third house is ruled by uh, Gemini, ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius. And when you get into the ninth house energy or the Sagittarian energy, you're really expanding your horizons here. You're going out to, you're traveling to different countries. You're traveling to like, say, if you grew up like in New York or Florida, like somewhere on the East Coast, now you may be traveling out to the West Coast, visiting California, Oregon, Washington, like any of that kind of stuff. Like this is an extreme difference in contrast to your known reality, your comfort zone, right? So now here, with this door to value energy, right, for you, Virgo, you do have the garden and the gate and the thinking man. So this also really does uh, resonate, I feel, with those who are Virgo rising in the sidereal system, because I was talking about, and if you missed, if you didn't watch that, but this part of the reading is resonating with you, maybe go back and watch that, because what we were saying for that was with the Mars shift that's happening, which for Virgo rising in sidereal astrology, Mars is transiting through your third house right now. Uh, but there's a reshaping of masculine energy for everybody right now, right? And so you are probably thinking about your values and trying to expand your horizons, trying to literally come out the gate, exit the gate, exit your 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 known reality and expand okay the garden and the gate is is literally somebody standing inside a beautiful garden a lush garden but then feeling kind of sad because like but there's so much else out there i just want to go explore there is another aspect of that sagittarian traveling type energy right but in terms of this you're really taking a practical mindset to this? How do I take different action? How do I release myself from this prison? The, the garden and the gate is very much an eight of swords energy, mental prison, confinement, and all that stuff. You're feeling stifled. You're feeling stifled, Virgo, or at least you have been feeling stifled. And this is really practical for you. As the masculine energy is going through their own shift, like with Mars, you're really starting to take this seriously. How do I take action forward? How do I do this practically? How do I be more expansive or experience more of an expansive view or an expansive energy or an expansive life? You don't want to be confined anymore, i.e. the title of this reading, coming out of the closet. Whether you're coming out of the closet sexually, congratulations, by the way, or just coming out of the closet in terms of what it is you truly value, what it is you truly want to experience in life, how it is you truly want to be of service in life. And taking a very practical uh, element to that, very practical mindset to that with this thinking man energy, yeah? I wanna get into some tar tarot here for you now, Virgo. We're gonna give this two more shuffles. Um, and I want to focus specifically on the garden and the gate, okay? This, this entrapment feeling. Last shuffle. Very Eight of Swords type of energy. So what is the garden and the gate for Virgo right now? Well, overall energy so far, you do have the Two of Wands. Absolutely. 
there is a choice to make or yes, absolutely, you are at a crossroads right now, okay? What's underneath this two of wands? The page of cups, a new emotional reality. The page of cups and then also the eight of wands, okay? Expanding your horizons, clearing away the blockages, communicating, moving to new places, movement in general, all right? And then under that is the seven of pentacles to the three of wands. The seven of pentacles did come out for Virgo rising, Okay, that was a big central focus. But for you here, generally speaking to Virgo energy, the seven of pentacles represents what it is you've been cultivating and how it is you see your life and, are, and what you have available to harvest right now. Is that truly what you want? And then underneath that is the three of wands, your path forward. Okay, so let's talk a little bit deeper. Uh, what do we have for Virgo for this garden and the gate energy? What do you want to say to Virgo? For January, the, the Eight of Cups, Virgo. I'm coming out. Oh, that was that was terrible. That was not even on key, but you know what I mean. Coming out the gate. Leaving the past behind. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right. All right. So, um, wait, I said Virgo, uh, Venus, I'm so sorry. I misspoke. Venus in terms of sidereal or mainstream astrology is not retrograde through Taurus right now. That was wrong. Uranus, Uranus in terms of mainstream tropical astrology is in Taurus right now. If Venus is in Sagittarius in may in in sidereal then she's actually in terms of tropical astrology venus would be in capricorn which is another earth sign okay um but really uranus i meant to say uranus is in taurus right now okay and whether that's and whether you you you're with sidereal or or tropical astrology uranus is having a huge effect on us right now if you resonate more with tropical astrology uranus being in taurus again is helping you to reshape your values because taurus is the ruler of the second house also taurus is ruled by venus but what you have here why i'm saying that is because what else has come out here in terms of garden and the gate and the eight of cups moving away stepping out of the gate here and expanding your horizons you have the emperor to the six of swords so the emperor rep uh, represents aries energy so this could either be the fact that uranus is in aries for us right now or it could just speak to mars energy because aries is ruled by mars but this is all about you having the personal authority to say i am moving forward I am releasing the burdens. I am clearing up the energy. I am freeing myself. Regardless as to what system you practice, Uranus is the planet of extreme revolution. Uranus works to free us from the confines, from the boundaries, from the structures, or at least some of the structures that Saturn has put into place for us throughout our lives so that we can be liberated, so that we can be more free, so that we have the ability to be more of our true selves, okay? Underneath the deck, at the bottom of the deck right now is the High Priestess to Justice. Follow your intuition. This was another thing that came out for Virgo Rising. In the past, there may have been a level of not not allowing your intuition to really sink in or the messages from your intuition, from your higher self, from the universe to sink in, the guidance that you're getting. But by you following this guidance now, by you really accepting what the universe or what your higher self is saying to you, you will be bringing justice and balance into your life, even if it looks like a shit show at first. Just saying. Anything else that we want to say to Virgo in terms of this energy? Yeah, temperance. Again, more Sagittarius energy, but whether you see Venus as moving through Capricorn or moving through Sagittarius, there's ultimately greater balance in play here, all right? Greater balance on a soul level, maybe even on an emotional level. That's it. And then the Page of Cups, new emotional reality. Beautiful. Reconciliation even for some, 
okay if you and, and and here's the thing the real big theme about this is us just getting being empowered okay the conjunction between the sun and pluto this month regardless as to what system you practice that's happening and that is infusing us with greater power on a soul level so even with this this aries emperor energy here the masculine right the control the boundaries um, if you really, if you really tap into that uh, 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 emboldened personal power, and you really stand your ground, and I don't mean this in a way that you're being destructive or you're being disrespectful to anybody, but if you are really holding your ground, you actually could receive some apologies. Page of Cups. Wow, I'm so sorry. I didn't. I didn't see it that way. I didn't know you felt that way. I didn't even know you were going through that. This, that, and what not, whatever. Stand your ground. There is the ability, even though this is very tower-like energy, even though this is a pretty big change, you may have some real serious things to say to some people to really assert some greater boundaries in terms of your health and wellness overall. But if you really stand in that power respectfully, the chances for reconciliation are fairly good, I say. I feel okay close out this reading and I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the same deck that I used for Gemini I'm gonna use the uh, the magic of unicorns here because I do feel like there is a strong personal focus for this personal empowerment is a big theme that I've come to understand from this deck and so that because that's what we're talking about here that's what I want to close this out for yes or close this out with you for close this out for you with there it is three shuffles one Two. And three. Alrighty, Virgo. Closing message for you from January. There it is right there. Okay, that's funny. You got one of the same cards that uh, uh, Gemini got, which again, you both are ruled by Mercury, so that makes sense. Overall energy for you in this closing message, uh, Virgo, is card number three. Create your vision. Do what makes your heart sing. You are being nudged forward. Yep. It's pretty self-explanatory, especially in terms of what we've been talking about here. But you have three more cards, it looks like. Yes, three more cards. The first card is the same card that uh, one of this, well, no, the same card that Gemini got. It's card number eight, open to abundance. Believe you deserve, accept plenty and prosperity. Believe that you deserve. Whatever it is your heart is calling for, regardless as to what the people around you say, you have to believe the emperor. You have to believe and enforce the fact that you are deserving of that which you are be your heart is calling for, okay? Even if the, some of those people don't even come with you, that's on them. It has nothing to do with you. I, 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 yeah, it could be your family. But again, that that literally has nothing to do with you, Virgo. You, I mean, there has been an energy here of you kind of like kowtowing or just giving of yourself to the detriment. It's time to stop doing that. Because really, Virgo, if you want to be there for people, if you really want to be in service to others, which is very much what your energy is, is oriented towards, you still got to be there for yourself. You cannot deplete yourself or allow yourself to be depleted in all these ways and then expect to still be able to show up and perform for people. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not going to work. Okay. So open to abundance. Believe you deserve and accept prosperity and plenty, right? Excellent. Next card you have is card number 20 rose gold cosmic pool bathe in cosmic love soak up wisdom but it's really the bathe i mean yes soak up wisdom but it's the bathe in cosmic love that really stands out here for you because you are loved unconditionally by the universe just as you are you don't have to be anything other than who it is you truly are at the core of yourself outside of all the programming and conditioning we get from society to be loved by the universe the universe loves you anyway so it's not like by you stepping out or coming out or asserting yourself in this way, it's not like the universe is going to stop loving you. Never, never. There may be some people around you that pull their love and affection and approval away from you. But again, Virgo, that has nothing to do with you. That is all a reflection of them. 
Now your association, your alignment with them is a reflection of your energetic state, but that energetic state is changing. Why is it an effect of your, or uh, is it reflective of your energetic state? Because you were in energetic alignment with it because of your own personal beliefs, but that's changing, or at least it's, it can change. Allow yourself to let it change at this time. Finally, you have card number 13, uh, which is Scorpio, death, transformation, creative solutions, think outside the box, view things from a higher perspective. And really quite like to boil it down, Virgo, that higher perspective absolutely includes recognizing, realizing, and accepting the fact that you are perfect just as you are. The universe loves you just as you are. From that higher perspective, you're great. Other people's opinions around about you are lower in perspective or lower in vibration. Okay. All right, Virgo, that's what I've got for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope sending you guys so much love to my beautiful Virgo collective. If you are new here again, hi, please make sure to subscribe if you'd like. Definitely smash that like button for me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Do all them things. If you are interested in more content from me throughout the month, I encourage you to check us out on Patreon. It does help to support the channel. Without you guys, I would not be able to be here. So thank you all so very much. If you would like a personal reading with me, I am available for that, both astrologically, like astrology, and also just pure tarot. Uh, my email can be found in the description box below, as well as some of the readings that I offer. And also the link to Patreon can be found in the description box below. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes? Beauty must. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>